In the last presentation, we derived this relation between the current density and the electric field intensity by using the formula for the drift velocity. Now, by using this form of the Ohm's law, this is my Ohm's law. Okay, Ohm's law and by using this form of Ohm's law, we will try to derive the another form of Ohm's law which is a very popular one, V equals to I R. So this is our motive in this presentation and also I will give you a much formal definition for your Ohm's law. So let's start with it. I will multiply the cross section area A on the both side. So I'm having J A equals to Sigma A E. Okay, and uh, if you remember the current density, then uh, it is equal to current per unit cross section area. This is my current density. If I multiply A on the both side, it gives me I equals to J A. So this J A is nothing but my current. So I can write it as I equal to sigma A. E is the electric field intensity and it can be written as potential difference V by the length of the conductor. You must have studied these things in your electrostat. Now let's divide both the sides by sigma A upon L. So I'm having sigma A upon L and here I'm having sigma A upon L. This sigma A upon L and this sigma A upon L will make 1 and uh, if I will write this thing in much simplified form then it is equal to L upon sigma A into I equals to V. Now the interesting point comes where you have to find out your resistance. L is constant, the length of the conductor is going to be the same. The sigma that is our conductivity is also same for a particular type of metal. The area of cross section is also constant. So overall we are having constant here. This is constant and I will call this constant R which is my resistance. So I am having V equals to I R. So by using this first form, I will call it first form of Ohm's law. I am having my second form of Ohm's law and this is the much popular form of the Ohm's law that is in your blood. Now let's move to a formal definition of the Ohm's law that you can write in your exams. The first thing that you have to mention in the Ohm's law is all the physical condition is same. There is no change in the physical condition. So you can write it as keeping the physical conditions and in physical conditions we are having the temperature. The temperature must not change because with change in temperature the resistance changes. So temperature should be same, the length should be same, area should be same then the current through the conductor let's say I is my current capital I current through the conductor through the conductor is proportional to the potential difference across it fine so it says the current I is proportional to the potential and when we remove this proportional sign we are having I equals to 1 by R V or if you multiply R on the both side you are having I R equals to V. So this is our Ohm's law and uh, you can plot it the dependent quantity is my current so it will come on the y axis the independent quantity is my potential difference so it is on the x axis and uh, this 1 by R, if you know the straight line, then this 1 by R is definitely my slope because Y is equal to MX plus C. The intercept here is 0. It means the line will pass through the center. This is my center. Y is my current I. X is my potential difference V and M is my slope which is 1 by R and 1 by R is a constant thing it is not changing so we are having a straight line like this and the slope can be calculated by this angle theta so 1 by r is equal to 10 theta this is all you need to write in your exams when they will ask you the ohm's law now you know ohm's law you know resistance you know drift velocity you know the current density what is electric current in the next presentation we will discuss what is ohmic and non-ohmic conductors it is also a very important thing to know
there are some conductors that don't follow this law which we call as the ohms law because after some time they deviate from this straight line okay they will deviate either upward or they will deviate either downward so they are not following the ohms law because the resistance is not constant this quantity 1 by r is called as the conductance the conductance and uh, it is represented as g so you can see that this slope is actually the conductance and uh, if the slope is greater the conductance is greater and hence the conductor is good and if slope is smaller like this it means that the conductance is low and the conductor is not that good it is not conducting well the unit of resistance the unit of resistance is ohms and it can also represented like this similarly the unit of conductance is ohm inverse or mho or the symbol and then the minus one over it so this is all that we have to discuss in this presentation and uh, in the next presentation we will talk about the ohmic and non-ohmic conductors so see you in the next one